What's up producers? My name is Jake Roberts and today I'm going to be showing you some sound design techniques taking just one sound source in Omnisphere that sounds like this and creating four unique patches that are going to sound like this. How? Let's get started. All right, I'm going to start by making a bass sound. So first step, I have to load up my sound source. So I'm going to go into layer A. In the oscillator section, I'll click Sample. And if I click here, it'll open up my big sound source browser. I'm going to go into Human Voices, Throat Singers, and find Tubin Mail 1 Drone Number 2. All right, now a couple basic oscillator controls. I can adjust the start position of the sample with this start slider. That allows me to get a stronger attack at the beginning of the sound. I can also reverse playback of the sample right here. Now I want to add some movement to the sound by modulating this start slider. So I'm going to right click it and modulate with LFO. This pulls up the modulation sidebar and I can fine tune my movement adjusting source to adjust the range of movement and the rate to adjust the speed. Next, I'm going to add a bit more modulation, this time to the coarse pitch. So I'll right click coarse pitch and modulate with envelope. This automatically maps this to mod envelope one and pulls it up in the modulation sidebar. Now, if I want to get more precise with my envelope adjustments, I can click the magnifying glass beside envelope. This opens the envelope zoom section. Now, by default, the envelope is set to loop and sync to the BPM of my song. I'm gonna keep these on and shorten the decay, which is gonna speed up the loop. Next, I wanna make this a little bit more gritty and dirty. So I'm gonna close the envelope soon and go into the oscillator section and turn on the wave shaper. So the wave shaper has three different types of distortion. I'm just gonna use the shaper for this sound. I can adjust the frequency, to determine how intense I want this effect. And choose one of four different types, each having their own tone and varying from least intense to most intense. So I'm gonna keep this kind of mild on this sound. Next, I wanna add a little bit of filtering to this. So I'll close oscillator zoom, go over to the filter section and turn it on. With this drop down menu, I can choose a ton of different filter presets. So here I want a low pass filter and I'm gonna choose the big fat power juicer. Start by turning up the cutoff slightly. The envelope depth knob is up already, so I can already hear some automatic movement. Now I like this, so I'm gonna leave it. To finish the sound, I'm just gonna add a few effects. So I'll go to the effects section, and I'm gonna start with a bit of compression. The modern compressor is a nice, clean, precise sounding compressor. I'm gonna use peak mode to catch any sharp volume spikes that might be creeping through. Finally, since this is supposed to be a bass sound, but it's made from a very organic human voice, I'm gonna use an EQ, basic studio EQ should be good, to give it a bit of a boost in the low end. So I think around 50 Hertz, to give it a nice six decibel boost. And other than that, I think it sounds pretty good. All right, the next patch I'm gonna make is a synth pluck lead. So I'll start the same way by opening the sound source browser, human voices, throat singers, Tuvin Mail 1, drone number two. On this sound, I'm gonna use granular synthesis. So I can find this in the oscillator section, GRN and turn it on. Granular synthesis fragments your audio into tiny slices called grains that are played back in different ways and can create continuous layered soundscapes. So Omnisphere's granular synthesis has two different modes, speed and position. Here, I'm gonna use the position mode, which makes this slider at the bottom act similar to the sample start, choosing the part in this sample that I'd like to granulate. <laughs> I can adjust the size of the slices as well as the intensity with some of the grain controls at the bottom here. 
Next, I want to shape this sound into more of a pluck. So I'm going to use a low pass filter again. I'm going to go for the big fat power juicer one more time. Now to adjust the shape, I'm going to use the envelope sliders for the filter that I can find right in the front panel here by clicking filter. For the typical pluck shape, I want a really low sustain, really fast attack, and I'm going to adjust the decay of the sound to taste. Cool. Now a couple effects. Again, I'm going to use the modern compressor just to give it a little bit of loudness and catch any peaks that might be created by the sharp pluck envelope. Next, I'm going to add a bit of reverb. Omnisphere has a few different reverbs. My favorite is the spring reverb. It has a really unique metallic tone to it. For this third patch, I'm going to make something that I can play some sustained chords. So, same sample. Here, I'm going to use Omnisphere's Unison. So, I can turn that on again in the oscillator section. Unison creates additional voices that give me a nice sense of layering and depth. I can choose how many voices with the depth slider, how much they're panned with the spread control, and how detuned they are from each other with the detune slider. Omnisphere's Unison has a unique feature that allows you to adjust the octave of the additional Unison voices. I'm going to shift these down one octave to fill out the lower end as I play higher chords. Awesome. I also want to add a bit of Wave Shaper distortion to this so I can navigate over to Wave Shaper and turn it on. This time I'm also going to use a bit of the Bit Crusher sample rate reducer, and maybe one of the more extreme wave shaper modes. I want this really nice and fuzzy sounding. Now, since I'm going to be playing sustained chords, I want to have a little bit of movement to this sound. I'd like to map an LFO to the volume, so I'm going to do this with the amp slider, put it to about halfway, then I can right click it and modulate with LFO. Again, this pulls up the modulation side panel here. I'm going to do a couple things to fine tune this shape. First, I'm going to change this LFO from free to note. This means the LFO is going to start at the beginning of the wave cycle every time I play a new note or chord. Next, I'm going to set this LFO to sync to the BPM of my song. Now when I adjust the rate, it will be in synced values. I'm going to adjust this to eighth notes. Finally, a couple effects just to finish off the sound. Here, maybe I'll try the Vintage Compressor, which compresses as well as gives a little bit of tone or character to it. I'm also going to use some reverb. Here, maybe the Easy Verb, just to switch things up a little bit. And finally, some modulation effect. I'm going to actually use the Analog Chorus, which is going to give me some more layers and depth to this sound. Final sound, same sound source. Tuba Mail 1, drone number 2. For this sound, I'm going to go about the sound design process in reverse a little bit. I'm going to start in the effects section, and I'm going to use a really interesting Omnisphere effect located in the creative tabs called Inner Space. The Inner Space effect creates unique tones by superimposing the characteristics of a sound onto another. In this case, this coin dropper, and I can choose two sounds if I want and have a balance between them. Next, I'm going to use a filter effect. I'm going to use the envelope filter. This has an envelope follower, which will create automatic movement based on the incoming note. Last, to give it just a little bit more flavor, I'm going to use a little more modulation with the analog phaser.
I hope some of these tips help get you excited about doing some of your own sound design in Omnisphere. If I can do all this using just a tube and throat singer, imagine what you can do with Omnisphere's extensive sound source library, as well as your own samples, which you can load in. Happy sound designing. Thank you.